west, the north and south, they're both the best. But I'd only go there as a guest, cause I love being here with you. I love the sea, I love the shore, I love the rocks, and what is more, with you there they'd never be a bore. Life is such a crazy game. I love all kinds of weather. Long as we're together, I love to hear you say my name. I love good wine and fine cuisine. And candlelight, I dig that scene. Baby, if you know what I mean. I love being here with you. I'm singing this song in honor of Peggy Lee's 101st birthday, which was yesterday. The Macy's band is swinging. I dig Ella singing because there's something else you know. They know how to say it. They know how to play it. They wind it up and let it A TV show with a great theme. The show tonight is going to be extreme. Because I love, yes, I love, I love being here with you. I love being here with you. The vibe is light and breezy. Billy's place, it's a virtual speakeasy. My home base, I'm glad that you dropped by. Time to grab a libation from the shelf. Have whatever you want, you gotta make it yourself. Sit back, relax, I'll make your troubles fly. A musical trip, nothing complicated, and if you tip, that's appreciated, good fellowship with no mask on our face. From apartment five across the park, I'm singing and swinging till it gets dark. Don't worry about finding a place to park, just park it at Billy's place. Park it at Billy's place. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's Friday. It's Friday, May 28th. I'm a day late. I'm so sorry we didn't make it last night, but I'm glad you're with us tonight for episode 49 of Billy's Place. It's going to be a fun night. I've been planning this one for a while. It is part one of my tribute to the great theme songs from great television shows that we all grew up on and remember. So I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. So just sit back, relax, and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. <laughs> just park it at Billy's Place. As I said, the first song was in honor of Peggy Lee celebrating her 101st birthday. And, um, you know, every day's a good day to sing a Peggy Lee song. Here's a spring song, a May song. This is the last chance that I'm going to get a chance to sing a song about the month of May, written by Hoagy Carmichael and Mitchell Parrish in 1933. I, I put it to a little bit of a, a bossa nova beat. Because that's always nice. One morning in May, don't forget, dear, that one wonderful day when we met, dear.
field, and I have a We to talk this that next has done the gin has right? He like our we not so we bring a hand of fact, but part Oh, I'm back up now. Okay. I wonder if that fixed things. Here, let me try this microphone. Oh, no, no, check in the mic. In the meantime, um, what else? Okay, so what else do I want to say? Oh, the merchandise this week, because it's Memorial Day weekend, my friend Alex, who runs the store, the uh, red storefront, the Billy's Place merchandise, we have a lot of items that are on sale this week for half off. If you go to my website, billystritch.com, and you click on the, uh, the link that says uh, go here for Billy's Place merchandise. There's like 12 or 15 items there, and several of them say uh, Spotlight, and all of those are half off. They include the caps and include the, the wine tote and the tote bag and the little throw pillow, a couple of other items, and those are half off. And The other thing is that, oh yeah, if you have, if you care to donate, so appreciate donating a little virtual tip uh, tonight on Venmo or PayPal. You can do that. There's two ways to do that. One is uh, on Venmo. It's uh, Billy at Billy Dash Stritch. PayPal is bstritch at yahoo.com. And if you want to just send a check, do it the old-fashioned way. You can write me via Facebook Messenger, and I will send you my address. So that's that. I feel like there's something else that I need to say. Are we good over there, you think? Um, Hard to tell? We're having problems. Yeah, it looks okay to you? Should I try to sing a ballad and see how that? Okay. I'm going to go on. We're going to see how it sounds. Hopefully it's going to be good. Keep your fingers crossed that everything is working. Uh, this is a request that I got for, uh, from my friend uh, who watches all the time, Audrey Hollingsworth. And she requested this beautiful song by um, Alan and Marilyn Bergman and Michelle Legrand. Okay. <laughs> and south and east and west of your life I have only one request of your life that you spend it all with me all the seasons and the times of your day See your face in every kind 
silent wish you make those tomorrows waiting deep in your eyes in the world of love you keep in your eyes I'll awaken what's asleep middle of it, Doug gave me a thumbs up. Is everything going well, do you think? I think so. Yeah? Are you reading comments? Are people hearing okay, you think? Yeah, it's, it sounds good. Sounds good? Better, yeah. Sounds better. All right. We're going to go on. Nothing like that happening in the middle of the show. <laughs> you heard the expression flop sweat? Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I know we're not a flop, but it's like we're doing the best we can with the sound and with the uh, you know, it's thundering out a storm, uh, up a storm out there, and the Wi-Fi is crazy, too, and I don't know if that's the issue tonight, but uh, uh, there's issues. So uh, we just forge ahead and move on and hope that you will understand and enjoy and uh, have a little sympathy. Uh, I have one more request to do before we jump into the TV theme songs. This is a song that was requested by my friend Annette Lai, who lives out in San Francisco, uh, I have known her for a long time. She's my buddy out there. And uh, she requested that I do something from the Carpenters. Uh, we did a Carpenters show back in March. Was it March, Doug? Yeah, yeah. back in March. And, uh, you know, fantastic show to do. Of course, certainly Doug's favorite music, some of my favorite music. And this song I thought would be a nice setup uh, to what's about to happen tonight. Okay, so this is a song that they recorded in 1975. It's from their fabulous album, Carpenter's album, Horizon, Doug's favorite Carpenter's album. Pain I was going through. Uh, 
by Carpenters. All right, I'm going to have one more sip of my drink. I'm going to have a little mop, mop down with my, uh, you know, my handkerchief because it did get hot. And uh, guess what, folks? It is that moment you've all been waiting for. And I've all been waiting for you. I know you, some of you have been waiting at least a day because we were going to do this yesterday. So take yourself back 70 years. This is one of the very first TV theme songs that I ever remember because there's not ever been a moment that this show has not been on the air somewhere. I love Lucy and she loves me. We're as happy as two can be. Sometimes we quarrel, but then how we love waking up again. Lucy kisses like no one can. She's my missus and I'm her man. And life is heaven, you see. Cause I love Lucy. Yes, I love Lucy. And Lucy loves me. That show ran from 1951 to 57. And then there was a year of uh, Lucy Desi Comedy Hour. And then in 1962, Lucy kind of reinvented herself with her buddy Vivian Vance and did six years of a show called The Lucy Show. six years and it was called Here's Lucy. Remember that little puppet? Such great memories. Lucille Ball was on the air all those years. There's not a day that goes by that somewhere in the world, I Love Lucy is not playing somewhere. There's probably a, not a minute that goes by that it's not playing somewhere. And when I was doing a little Wikipedia research, I read something really, really kind of silly and interesting. Uh, and I Love Lucy, Lucy's character was Lucy Ricardo. And... Uh, the Lucy show, her name was Lucy Carmichael. And in Here's Lucy, she was Lucy Carter. And they all have A-R in them, all those names. Ricardo, Carmichael, Carter. And that was a tribute to Desi Arnaz. I love that. I mean, where else would you hear this kind of stuff if it wasn't for me? So I love Lucy. That started it all for me, my love affair with TV theme songs. And I'm sure for a lot of you probably feel the same way. Here's one that came along in 1960, and the show ran till 1968, and it's one of those songs that, uh, well, we only heard it on the show as an instrumental, and I can't whistle. I told you I couldn't whistle, but luckily, this song, has lyrics. This was written by Earl Hagen. 
His name's going to come up again tonight because uh, he wrote lots of great theme songs. And Herbert Spencer, anybody? Wrote the lyrics, I'm assuming. This is called The Fishing Hole. Well, now take down your fishing pole and we be at the fishing hole. We may not get a bite all day, but don't you rush away. What a great place to rest your bones and mighty five for skipping stones. You'll feel fresh as a lemonade sitting in the shade. Whether it's hot, whether it's cool, like a fool. What a fine day to take a stroll and wander by the fishing hole. I can't think of a better way to pass the time of day. Hanging around, taking our ease, watching that hound scratching at his fleas. Come on, take down your fishing pole and meet me at the fishing hole. I can't think of a better place to pass the time of day. The Andy Griffith Show brought to you by Maxwell House Coffee or something like that. That's a cute song, right? I could just see Andy Griffith and little Ronnie Howard as Opie in the opening credits. That's 1960. And the next year, 1961, here's another show that I grew up on because every afternoon in Houston, Texas, Sugarland, where I'm from, on Channel 39, at 4 and 4.30, they would play I Love Lucy, and then they would play The Dick Van Dyke Show. And I love The Dick Van Dyke Show because he was in showbiz. He was a comedy writer, and he lived in New York, I mean, worked in New York, and uh, they would have singing and parties at the house, and um, it was just kind of showbiz, and I kind of love that whole atmosphere. Well, it's still one of the most wonderfully written and performed shows, and we all know this theme. Also has lyrics. Maury Amsterdam wrote lyrics, you know, Buddy Sorrell, and the theme was written again by Earl Hagen. It's a cute lyric. It's called Keep Your Fingers Crossed. So you think that you've got troubles. Well, trouble's a bubble. So tell old Mr. Trouble to get lost. Why not hold your head high up? Why not hold your head up high and stop crying, start trying, and don't forget to keep your fingers crossed. When you find the joy of living is loving and giving, you'll be there when the winning dice are tossed. A smile is just a frown that's turned upside down, so smile and that frown will defrost. And don't forget to keep your fingers crossed. So cute, right? Ah, uh, I love that song so much. I love that show. You know, that show was the first time that I heard uh, mountain greenery. Oh, oh, what scenery in a mountain greenery where God paints the scenery. Just two crazy people together. Okay, I'm not going to sing it tonight, but Rob and Laura Petrie sang it in the living room, and that was the first time I, uh, I heard that song, and I've been singing that forever. Uh, the next two songs I just want to play a little snippet of because it's so funny. They're instrumentals. One is from a drama, but the second one is from a, a, a situation comedy. But they both have this crazy film noir kind of theme. The first one is from Perry Mason. And this one is from The Honeymooners. Jackie Gleason wrote this. Um, and it's, it's so not the song I think you would pick for a, a sitcom, 
but it's iconic. <laughs> I mean, that's that show, The Honeymooners, it's such an iconic show. And as everybody knows, I think there's only like 39 episodes or something. I don't know how that show's had the staying power that it has had, but it has. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on to 1962. Such a great year. Wait a second, I'm going to have some water. How you doing over there, Doug? Great. <laughs> Doug is calming down over there. Uh, he's doing a great job, right? Getting it all together? Okay, good. It's working. It's always a little nerve-wracking when things go wrong at the beginning of the show. But uh, I just have to check in and make sure he's okay. So that's good. Uh, 1962 started, well, I think Andy Williams in 1960 kind of started this little trend towards shows that were geared to rural, uh, community rural life, easy life, country life. And, uh, but 1962 certainly was the beginning of uh, the nine-year run of one of the most iconic shows of the 60s. Um, uh, do you want to go with me to the uh, cement pond for a minute? See Ellie Mae and the Critters? A story about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer, barely kept his family fed. Then one day he was shooting at some food, and up from the ground came a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire, and the Kim folks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be, so they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heap and hoping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. The Beverly Hillbillies, brought to you by K-E-L-L-O-Double-G, Kellogg's best to you. Uh, this has been a Filmways presentation, y'all. <laughs> so that was 1962. Believe it or not, I was a little, little kid, and we saw the Beverly Hillbillies at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. I remember nothing about it, but I do remember that they were there. And I guess they did a little hour-long comedy show with some... Music. I'm sure they had Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs there, and uh, God knows what else. I was too young to remember that, but I know that it happened. Uh, okay, the next year, 1963, again, a Paul Henning creation. He produced the first show, The Beverly Hillbillies. Um, he produced this show, another rural success, and it ran for seven years till 1970. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And there's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Woo woo. Love that show. B. Benadaret. Loved her. And uh, the rotating cast of. Uh, the girls, you know, Bobby Sue, Billy Sue, Betty Sue, Jimmy Sue, Annie Sue, Beulah Sue, Bertha Sue, uh, Bobby Sue, 
Um, you know, all of those are Billy Joe, Betty Joe, Bertha Joe, Sewer Joe, whatever. Uh, it was a fun show. It was a simpler time, wasn't it? Okay, 1965, here comes another one of those Paul Henning shows, and I think it was a spinoff from Beverly Hillbillies. No, from Petticoat Junction. It's all too confusing. But uh, I'm going to sing this uh, special little shout-out to my, my cousins, Nikki and Bill, who are living out on a farm in Tennessee with all the critters. Um, Green Acres is the place to be Far of living is the life for me Land spreading out so far and wide Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside New York is where I'd rather stay I get allergic smelling hay I just adore a penthouse view. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. The chores, the stores, fresh air, Times Square, you are my wife. Goodbye, city life. Green Acres, we are there. That's for you, Nikki. They, she showed me a picture yesterday. They actually have a goat. They've adopted a goat along with all their dogs, a goat named Leonard. And she showed me a picture and said, yeah, he looks like a Leonard. So that's perfect. All right. So those were the rural shows. Oh, God, I need a drink after that. I need a sip of this. So. Rural juror. <laughs> rural juror, exactly. Mm. All right. So there was a little craze in the mid-'60s for uh, these kind of creepy shows, fish out of water, crazy families that are, you know, well, you'll see. I mean, this one, everybody's going to know. This was written by the legendary Vic Mizzy. Oh, that was awful. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky, the Adams family. Their house is a museum when people come to see them. They really are a scream, the Adams family. Neat. Sweet. Petite. So put a witch's shawl on, a broomstick you can crawl on. We're gonna pay a call on the Adams family. And then the same three years, 1964 to 1966, this show was running too. Of course, that was filmed at Universal City Studios in Burbank. You know how I know that? Because when I was a little kid, we took a trip to Universal City Studios. It was probably 1966. I mean, this is one of the first things that I honestly remember. And I remember you, you would, I think maybe you still do, you'd get on a tram and you'd ride through and they would take you through sets. And I remember seeing the set are the lagoon for McHale's Navy. And I remember seeing the Munster's house. Now, honestly, I don't remember if I actually remember them or if I, I know there are photos of it in a photo album. And maybe I remember it because I've seen the photos. But I do remember at one point, we went to an exhibition where they would show, they would take a volunteer, they would show movie magic. And at one point they took a volunteer out of the audience and uh, they were going to do a makeover, like 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 movie makeup. And uh, I remember they grabbed my mother out of the audience, and I'm like, where is she going? And they put her up, and I remember looking up, and she was like reclined 
in a chair, and then other stuff was going on for like 20 minutes. They were showing demonstrations of this and this, and then they brought my mother out of the chair, and she was made up. It was crazy, so much makeup. It was like, I think it was frightening to me at the time because it was like big blue eyeshadow and big eyelashes and lots of, it was so not my mom. But uh, there, and I remember that because there is a picture of that in the photo album. It was so funny. The stuff you remember when you're little. Anyway, The Munsters, Adam's Family, both great shows that I remember very well in reruns. Another one that I remember very well in reruns from 1964 to 1967. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this trumpet port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that way for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. <sighs> the weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost, the minnow would be lost. The ship set ground off shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, the skipper too, the millionaire and his wife, the movie star, and the rest. No, the professor and Mary Ann here on Gilligan's Isle. And the closing credits. So this is the tale of our castaways. They're here for a long, long time. They'll have to make the best of things. It's an uphill climb. The first mate and his skipper too will do their very best to make the others comfortable in their tropic island nest. No phone, no whites, no motor car, not a single luxury. Like Robinson Crusoe, it's primitive as can be. So join us here each week, my friends. You're sure to get a smile from seven stranded castaways here on Gilligan's Isle. What a great theme song. I mean, it tells you the whole story over and over every week in case you, you know, you know, you, you forget. You remember, like, what the story is. And that was written by Sherwood Schwartz, who created the show. He wrote the theme song. He has sole credit on that. So I thought maybe now would be a time to explain to you what happened to me last night, why I was not able to do the show. I didn't want to like make a big announcement. Well, of course, I, I couldn't because I was off of Facebook. So just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful post that landed me in Facebook jail and turned my butt to toast. Okay, you know Facebook jail, you know. 24 hours of Facebook jail. Okay, guys, here's what happened. And it's so silly, and I couldn't believe that it had happened. But you know, you know that expression when you know a friend of yours is doing a show and you say, knock him dead. Right? That's perfectly reasonable, right? So a friend of mine's doing a show, and I write on the comment. Have fun and kill the people. Innocent, perfectly innocuous. I go to Starbucks a little later yesterday, about noontime. I go on Facebook because I can't not be on Facebook more than, you know, every five minutes. And I go on and it's like a notice pops up. I have been banned from Facebook for 24 hours for promoting violence and hate speech. And, uh, oh, my God. Okay. For saying... Have fun and kill the people. Okay, so my friend Jim said, and this is what Facebook is doing to help, you know, the problem of gun violence. Anyway, you know, it's all about tone on Facebook. You know, there's clearly no real person reading this stuff. Anyway, I panic, and I'm thinking, oh, well, God, I can't post today. And then as I'm walking home, thinking, well, I can't do a show tonight. That's what that means. So there's a place where you can actually write you know, you can dispute it, and it gives you a couple of op options. And I check the option. I think Facebook misunderstood. Easy, right? So I press that, and I'm thinking I'm not going to hear anything. 
And I come home, I tell Doug what's happened. Oh my God. And then I check, I go online again, and they've written back, the robot has written back, said, we get, we apologize. Your, your remark, your post is back on Facebook. Sometimes we get it wrong, and uh, we misinterpreted, and that's fine. So I say, oh, oh, we're good. It's okay. It's good. So I go back to post something else. Well, I'm still in Facebook jail, even though that post went back on. I still can't post for 24 hours. So that's what happens. So be careful what you post when you say, have fun and kill the people. Someone's going to misinterpret that. All right. Is that inc are, are you all as incredulous about that as I am? Is, are people writing? Are they like saying things about it? I know, kill Facebook, right? Exactly. So anyway, that's what happened to me. I want to thank all of you who I was able to write to because you've written me through Messenger in the past. So I, I wrote you and said, please post something, let people know because there's no way to let people know on Facebook. You know, if you're on Facebook, you can't go on Facebook and say I'm not going to be on Facebook because you can't go on Facebook. And so Doug posted, but like you know, my friend Marty and my friend. Uh, Annette and my friend Anne and uh, all of you, you know who you are. Everybody posted something lovely. So we got the word out. Uh, anyway, that's what happened. So I'm going to be really careful. And post a bail. Doug said, yeah, we post a bail. So anyway, I got out of Facebook jail about 1230 this afternoon. So I'm delighted to be out of jail. The first thing I had was a hot meal and a shower. I hardly got any sleep because the guy next in the cell next to me was, was wailing and screaming all night long. So I'm glad to be out of jail. Anyway, moving on with the show. Thank you. I, I thought you all deserved an explanation. All right, moving on with the show. Oh, my God, we should move on. Uh, 1963 to 1966, this song was written by Sid Raymond and Bob Wells. Okay, Sid Raymond, most fabulous orchestrator. He did the orchestrations for Gypsy. Um, I believe he was a fantastic drummer. Um, and Bob Wells wrote the lyrics to the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, was married to Lisa Kirk, uh, wrote tons of songs. That's what comes to mind. And in 1963, they wrote this about identical cousins. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Meet Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Santa Bar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends. A different as night and day. While Kathy adores the minuet, the ballet russe, and crepe Suzette. While Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still, they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike, they talk alike, at times they even talk alike. You will lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Cousins. See, that sets up the whole show, right? But here's what I've always questioned. Patty loves to rock and roll. I get a hot dog makes her lose control. Really, that seems extreme to me. I mean, I like hot dogs as much as the next person, but it makes her lose control. All right. Just always wondered about that. Here's another song from 1965. This only ran one year, but it starred adorable, cute, beautiful. I still love her so much. The great Sally Field. <laughs> like a psych Holman introduction. If you're in doubt about angels being real, I can arrange to change any doubts you feel. Boy, do you see my kitchen? You'll wonder for your valentine. Your 
You're going to say that she's all that you adore. Stay away, because Jane Kitchen is spoken for. You're going to find that Kitchen is mine. It's kind of creamy and madmanish and kind of groovy. A little Bob, Bobby Darren. That song was written by Howard Greenfield, Jack Keller. And then uh, Howard Greenfield, you know, he wrote a lot of songs with Neil Sedaka. But the year before, he and Jack Keller had this great theme song. And this is from a show that, if I had to pick a favorite from the 60s, this actually might be it because I was just over the moon about Elizabeth Montgomery. <laughs> because it's all about, you know, a girl, a wife, who has a power that the world can't know about. So the next year, 1965, Barbara Eden, Larry Hagman starred in this show. Jeannie, fresh as a daisy, just love how she obeys me, does things that just amaze me so. She smiles, presto, the rain goes, she blinks, up come the rainbows, car stop, even the train goes slow. When she goes by, she paints sunshine on every rafter, sprinkles the air with laughter, we're close as a quarter after three. There's no one like Jeannie, I'll introduce her to you, but it's no use, sir, cause my Jeannie's in love with me. I bet you didn't know that that had lyrics. My buddy John Weber told me that that had lyrics and he sent them to me. And then I looked it up and on YouTube there is a recording of that song. I don't think they ever sang the lyrics on the show. They're so politically incorrect right now. You know, just love how she obeys me. Yeah, you can't really get away with that now. But you know, as I say, it was a simpler time. Speaking of simpler time, now this girl I love, 1966, just moved to New York from Brewster, New York, on her own, trying to make it in the big city as an actress, as a model. The story of Anne Marie. Diamonds, daisies, snowflakes, that girl, chestnuts, rainbow, springtime, is that girl. She's tinsel on a tree. She's everything that every girl should be. Sable, popcorn, white wine, that girl. Give them bluebirds, Broadway. Is that girl? She's mine alone. But luckily for you, if you find a girl to love uh, only one girl to love then she'll be that girl too that girl in color i loved that girl marlo thomas of course the daughter of danny thomas 
So that theme song was written by Earl Hagen, who wrote Dick Van Dyke and Andy Griffith, all Danny Thomas productions. Um, and the lyrics were written by Sam Denoff, who created the Dick Van Dyke show and as the daddy of my friend Doug Denoff. And uh, so I love that show so much. You know, and uh, oh, Donald, Donald Hollinger, Ted Bessel, so great. I mean, so many great episodes of that. When she meets Ethel Merman, I love Miss Merman. Calls her Miss Merman through the whole thing. Um, just so great. Marlo Thomas was the best. Um, we got a few more to do, but before we uh, wrap up, I don't want to forget to uh, to uh, mention the uh, virtual tip jar another time. Uh, if you're able to uh, create, uh, to send a little love my way for uh, the hour's entertainment that you're hopefully enjoying, um, you can do it through PayPal and you can do it through Venmo. And uh, Doug's put those on the screen for you now. Or you can write me through Facebook Messenger and I'll send you an address and you can send a check. And it's all so appreciated. You guys have been totally supportive. And uh, we are 49 episodes in. Next week will be 50, clearly. After 49 comes 50. Um, it will be TV Themes Part 2. And when I'm looking at the list and adding things to it, I have a feeling there's going to be a TV Themes Part 3. So I hope that meets with everybody's approval. Um, and I'd be welcome to uh, take your request. I won't guarantee that I will do everything that you request. Uh, but there's, I've gotten a few requests from people, and I've been like, oh, of course, I forgot about that. So, you know, there's so many, and there's only so many reference books, and there's only so many, and I, I don't, I don't want to leave anything really fun and really good out. So next week, I'm going to start with, uh, you know, uh, 1970, and we'll go through the 70s, probably, maybe into the 80s. And then uh, a week from that, on, uh, on June 10th, we'll finish up and do uh, the more recent ones. There aren't a lot of great ones that are really recent, because, you know, these TV theme songs have gone out of fashion, which is a shame. But I get it, because, you know, there's so many more commercials now. I mean, it used to be a 30-minute show, you know, it, the actual content of a 30-minute show was like 25 minutes, 30, 26 minutes with commercial breaks. And there was time for a theme song and a closing theme. And now a 30-minute show is like 20 minutes. And the rest of it is so much commercial. And there's no, no time for theme songs. And you get to the closing credits, and you're already, you know, they squish it to the bottom, and they're already into the next show. So, you know, it's just def definitely different. I'm not drinking to that, but I'm drinking. I also want to mention, oh, before I forget, I forgot to mention the first part of the show. Uh, I'm so happy live gigs are starting slowly to come back, and I'm going to be taking Billy's Place on the road to the beautiful Bucks County Playhouse out in Bucks County uh, in New Hope, uh, Pennsylvania. It is so great. It's just right across the river into Pennsylvania. I've played there many times at a club there called Odette's. Uh, and I've been to the Bucks County Playhouse. I've also played the Raz Room, different venues there over the past, gosh, 25, 30 years. Um, and it's always lovely. And I'm, my, it's wonderful to be in the actual iconic Bucks County Playhouse. My friend Jim Caruso has co-produced the series um, that is going on now. And uh, I will be the closing artist uh, of this summer series. So I'm going to be doing two shows, Saturday night, June the 12th, and then Sunday afternoon, June 13th. So if you're anywhere near Bucks County, if you're in the Philadelphia area, or if you're in New Jersey, even in New York, um, I encourage you to come down for a night or for the weekend. It's just gorgeous. There's so much to do. You can walk. You can walk across the river. There's shopping. There's great restaurants. And it's beautiful. And come see my show. It's going to be so much fun. So go to the Bucks County Playhouse website. I think it's bcptheater.org. And uh, check for tickets. And I would love to see you there. It would be so much fun. I'm excited about it. All right, we've got a few more times, things to go. And then we're going to get to the end of part one. Anyway, here's one, 1966. Here we come. Walking down the street, I get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. 
I hey hey with the monkeys. My people say we monkey around, but we're too busy singing to put anybody down. We're just trying to be friendly. Come and watch us sing and play. We're the young generation, and we've got something to say. Hey hey with the monkeys. You never know where we'll be found. So you better get ready. We may be coming to your town. Davy Jones and the Monkeys. Uh, what a great time. All right. So Doug reminded me that Friday nights on ABC TV in the late 60s and early 70s were truly a magical night. It was a great night to stay home, especially if you were our age. And uh, because of the next three shows, the Friday night lineup on ABC TV. Soft and sweet, wise and wonderful, oh, our mystical, magical nanny. Since the day that nanny came to stay with us, fantastic things keep happening. Is there really magic in the things she does? Or is love the only magic thing that Nanny brings? You know our Nanny showed us. You can make the impossible happen. Nanny told us. Have a little bit of faith and lots of love. Phoebe Figalilli is a silly name, and so many silly things keep happening. What is this magic thing about Nanny? Is it love or is it magic? Nanny and the Professor with Juliet Mills and Richard Long. Oh my God, that's a great theme written by the Adrisi brothers and sung by them. And, you know, they wrote a big hit song at that time called Never My Love. And they were kind of a big deal at the time. Speaking of big deal, okay, my friend Rhonda, you can tune out now because she said, you're not going to do this song. I'm like, yeah, I am. So uh, I said, I warn you before it's going to happen. So here it is. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold, like their mother, the youngest one in curls. Here's the story of a man named Brady, who was busy with three boys of his own. They were four men living all together, yet they were all alone. Till the one day when the lady met this fellow And they knew that it was much more than a hunch That this group must somehow form a family That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch The Brady Bunch The Brady Bunch That's the way we became the Brady Bunch you know, the opening credits. That's like, you know, just getting into the episode. And then uh, when they're sad and something's going on. Da -da -da -da. It's just so sad, right? Uh, I love incidental music on uh, these TV shows. I mean, God, I watched that show. I know every episode. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. We know every episode of that show. Um, today I was thinking about it. I love all the guest stars. Uh, just unlikely that came out of nowhere. But uh, Joe Namath was the guest because Peter had to meet Joe Namath. And then, of course, Marsha, you know, had to meet Desi Arnaz Jr. And for some reason, stupid Marsha promised the high school that she'd get Davy Jones to sing at the prom. And, of course, he showed up and he sang... <laughs> You remember this? Girl, look what you've done to me. <laughs> me and my whole world. 
girl you brought the sun to me and it's good to feel that way girl thank you girl for making the night morning brighter girl for making the night time brighter girl for making a better world for me i think that's enough of that i don't think anyone needs to hear all of that song but I do remember that episode really well. Okay, Brady Bunch, I got two more. Okay, this is the end of that great Friday night lineup, and I wanted to be part of this family so badly. And I was talking to my good buddy Bruce Roberts last night. He's in L.A., and, you know, he wrote so many great songs, including Enough is Enough for Barbara Streisand and Donna Summer, and uh, he's iconic. He's written so many great things. And I was telling him I was going to do this song, and he said... You know, I was the voice of Danny Partridge. I was like, what? He said, yeah, Danny Bonaduce couldn't sing. None of those little kids could sing. The only two people that could sing were Shirley Jones and David Cassidy, and the rest of the, the, rest of the voices were like, you know, they were all dubbed. And he said, I was the voice of Danny Partridge. So uh, I love knowing that. So, Bruce, this one's for you. <laughs> Hello world, there's a song that we're singing Come on, get happy A whole lot of loving is what we'll be bringing We'll make you happy We had a dream, we go traveling together Spread a little loving and we'll keep moving on Something always happens whenever we're together We get a happy feeling when we're singing a song Traveling along, there's a song that we're singing. Come on, get happy. A whole lot of loving is what we'll be bringing. We'll make you happy. We'll make you happy. We'll make you happy. Oh my God, I wanted to be in the Partridge family so much. I'm sleeping and right in the middle of a good dream. I wish I knew all the lyrics. I really love that song a lot, a lot. But I don't know the words. Ba -da -da -da. I think I love you. Isn't that what life is made of? -da 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 -da. I don't know the words. I, why didn't I prepare for that? Maybe next week. Maybe on a future show. I wanted to be in that family so bad. And I actually think... I told Shirley Jones that years later when I met her about 10 years ago. I'm sure she'd never heard that from anyone before. So I felt compelled to tell her that. You know, what sets me apart, Shirley Jones, from any other fan that you've met is that I really wanted to be part of the Partridge family. Well, I did tell her that, though. She couldn't have been nicer. She is so nice. Anyway, you guys have been so nice. I hope that I have made you happy. Come on, get happy. Um, I have had a good time. We got off to this little rocky start, actually not doing a show yesterday, and then today just a little bit of a rocky start, and you guys are so wonderful to hang in there with me to the end of the show. Please join us next Thursday, June 3rd, for part two of these theme songs. As I said, if you have requests, please put them in the comments, or better yet, write them to me in a Facebook message. I'll be sure and see them. And also, one more time, if you're able to send a tip, please do that. It would be so appreciated. Venmo, PayPal, write me a messenger, and we can uh, do it that way. So uh, thank you, Doug. We made it through tonight, right? Well, we're not done yet. Well, he said we're not done yet. We're almost done, honey. Breathe. It's going to be good. Cheers to all of you. Uh, you know, May 26th, we are 14 months in to more than 14 months into all this. And uh, it's miraculous to me how things are starting to come back. I mean, I'm sure it's not lost on any of you that we have come so far in just a year, not just here, but in the world. I remember how scared everybody was at the end of May last year. And uh, it feels so much better now to go outside. Of course, I'm in New York. It's very densely populated, as you know, so I always keep the mask nearby. But it's wonderful to go out in the park with the dog and take it off. And uh, I have it off a lot. It's nice. I, I mean, I still go into buildings with it. But uh, 
God, it's so much better than it was. So it's miraculous. I'm very thankful for all of that, but really thankful for all of you who've been so loyal all this time. Please go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Billy Stritch, if you haven't done so already. And uh, I'm going to leave you with this iconic theme song from one of my favorite shows of all time. I'm so glad we had this time together Just to have a laugh or sing a song Seems we just get started And before you know it Comes the time we have to say so long there's a time you put aside for dreaming and a time for things you have to do but the time I like the best is any evening and I can spend a moment here with you when the time comes that I'm feeling lonely and I'm feeling oh so blue I just sit back and think of you only and the happiness still comes true that's why I'm glad we had this time together cause it makes me feel like I belong seems we just get started and before you know it comes the time we have to say so long good night everybody I'll see you next Thursday. Thank you so much. I love you, my friends.